What's going on? My name is Joe and I practice talking on the internet and I want to talk about freedom and why I'm a little, I don't know what the word is, annoyed, wary, whatever. I don't know what <laughs> use of speech you want to use for it. But basically, what I want to talk about is freedom as a byproduct of other things. Um, very, very often you're going to see people who will herald certain folks like John Brown and John Brown's movement for the abolition of slavery. And people got to really just recenter why these people were motivated in the ways that they were. And if we remember that history is not really reflective of what actually happened when we're learning about it, and what I mean by that is we get a small piece of history to get a general understanding of what happened, but nothing really fully substantive when we're learning, um, especially in K through 12, we gotta remember that any story that we hear about any figure, we're going to have to do more research and digging on, and John Brown especially. Because what we learned, if you look deeper into John Brown, is that he was apathetic towards black people. And he was apathetic in very unobvious ways. And there's a bunch of books that go in on this. Um, if I remember, after I post this, I'll put it in the description. So for those of you who are looking for a bit more of like a, a deeper dive, because I'm not going to go into the history of John Brown here. That's not my intent. My intent here is to recognize and let you guys know is that there's propaganda about John Brown. And the propaganda is that John Brown cared about black people. And for every single person, I would imagine, who has some level of like, what? Nunny? <laughs> um, we just got to remember that, listen, the history of John Brown has been whitewashed in a way to appeal to the sensibilities of the American left and appeal to those sensibilities insofar as we get propagandized and thinking John Brown cared about black people in a way that was substantive to the conditions that black people were under. We do this to white people all the time, especially in the Civil War era. Um, and we can just go with what they said and why they're, why they're motivated in certain ways. Because if Elijah Lovejoy never was murdered, and I think it was like 1837 or 1836, um, we, may, we probably would never have had John Brown. Um, especially considering that Nat Turner was like five to six years before that. So John Brown wasn't motivated um, because of, uh, of, of Nat Turner and what happened to Nat Turner. He was motivated by being told about Elijah Lovejoy. And then he has that quote that people herald about his shift. And that matters because when you are trying to figure out like, okay, do these individuals that we herald and respect in their role in the liberation of black people, do they really even care about black people? And I would argue that in a lot of situations, especially for the white folks that get heralded and platformed as people we ought to look up to, their desire to free black people or desire for the rights of black people was just a byproduct. It wasn't at the forefront of why they were doing this. And in different contexts, we can just, depending on what I'm saying in different contexts, based on how you're able to look, we can look indirectly what they said. We can look indirectly how their actions were. Like, this is why when it comes, when the rubber hits the road, like LBJ wasn't shit. <laughs> and like people, like for whatever reason, they want to think that like Lyndon B. Johnson was this sort of like, savior of like if he had multiple terms imagine what the world would be for black people and it's like uh, this is the same man in the face of the moynihan report didn't do shit and this is the face this is the man in the face of the kerner report didn't do shit so it's like what are we gonna what are we what are we doing here and and the moynihan report's terrible for a lot of reasons um and the kerner report's no better but at least the kerner report was like hey you know maybe we should figure out like what to do about these things and when the rubber hits the road nothing happened when the rubber hits the road for helping black americans white people come short and they're going to come short in very obvious ways like um bill clinton and maybe in unobvious ways like joe biden and that should be a lesson at least for white people in my opinion to be substantive 
about their claims and like listening to black people understanding the black experience to the best of their ability and then recognizing the vulnerabilities that black people have in the context that they find themselves in and if black people are in a condition due to their vulnerabilities to not fight be the fight and for people like john brown he wasn't that um for people like bill clinton wasn't that Barack Obama wasn't that. Um, insert most white civil rights activists wasn't that. And again, like, sure, you would have situations where they would care about specific things in proxies, proximity, excuse me, to the actualization of freedom for black people, the actualization of things like desegregation. Um, civil rights and what have you but these are just byproducts it was never this idea of white people coming up to the forefront and saying like black people need this and i'm going to fight for this for them but it's never the case um and there are a few examples of that i'm not going to get into like the, the the one or two that we can point to as, as examples because there are white allies who are able to like articulate the fight for black people and fight on behalf of them because there's a few of those that are sprinkled in the 1970s and 80s. But in a totality, we're talking about like this, like sort of like a broad, like we're taking all the way up and looking down. If we want to have better allies, quote unquote, even though there's an argument that the allies don't really exist, which I agree with, is you need white people who listen and understand the substantive conditions that black people are in and are willing to put their social, political, and economic careers on the line for those to be actualized. And when those are the stakes, not a lot of white people go up to bat. Not a lot, not a lot of non-black people go up to bat. Um, and it's unfortunate because then what happens is you get stories like John Brown, um, Sailor Soul, and others who get pushed to like, Anytime you critique them and saying, like, yeah, they were pretty apathetic towards black people. And we can look at their, their, their record to, to suggest that. And then you start getting like the back and forth, like, well, what do you mean? And it's like, look, yeah, John Brown is a victim of propaganda. No different than any other what we believe to be white leftist or white individual who do, did good things or did things. Um, or we believe to be good things. And I'm saying we need to be a bit more honest about the history that these people found themselves in and the context that they were in because we're never going to really actualize the rights and freedoms of black people if we continue to play this game like um there are there there are folks that we ought to platform and, and respect and revere for their I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's messy. It's just a whole, a whole mess. And I think we need to do a better, better job at clarifying history. Um, yeah, we gotta do a better job at clarifying history. And the clarification of history is gonna save a lot of time because then when you hear people like, un I just, I won't say unironically, but when they start just like saying, well, well, John Brown this and Sailor Soul that, you can go like, well, hang on, like. Did John Brown care about black people? Was his motivations to be so like grounded against slavery about black people? Or was it just about some like libertarian wet dream? <laughs> because that's why like you'll, you'll, you're, you will, you will always find a libertarian that will try to act like they care about black people. But in reality, they don't care about black people. It's just, you know, caring about black people and black freedom is just a byproduct of their their little wet dream of a revolution. Um, and we can't have that because um, can't have that. Can't have that. But anyway, that's really all I got. Um, this is probably going to be shorter than most of the other videos I have. But I just want to kind of get that sort of like thought down on the ground to the best of my ability um, as usual. Thank you to everybody on Patreon. Thank you everybody who's been supporting the GoFundMe. And um, if you see this the day that I post it, I'll probably be streaming. Um, I've been dealing with some stuff in the background that's causing me to have trouble going through and sitting for extended periods of time. But we'll see how we feel today. And with that, have a good rest of your day and I'll see you soon.